the United Kingdom's defence prioritisation is being upgraded, marked by two significant announcements during the 2025 NATO summit. The government has confirmed the purchase of 12 new F-35A Lightning II fighter jets for the Royal Air Force and a commitment to increase core defence spending to 3.5% of GDP by 2035. The central question arising from these developments concerned their potential impact, both direct and indirect on the Royal Navy, its aircraft carriers and the F-35B fighters. This analysis will run through these implications, examining whether this strategic move will strengthen or complicate the future trajectory of the Royal Navy's air power. On the 24th of June 2025, the Prime Minister announced at the NATO summit in The Hague that the British government will purchase 12 F-35A fighter jets. These aircraft are designated for operation by the Royal Air Force and will be based at RAF Marham in Norfolk. The paramount reason for this acquisition is the UK's formal decision to join the NATO's dual capable aircraft nuclear sharing mission. This move represents the most substantial reinforcement of the UK's nuclear posture since the Cold War, reintroducing an air delivered nuclear strike role to the RAF for the first time since the WE-177 gravity bomb's retirement in 1998. The F-35As will be capable of carrying US-owned B-6112 thermonuclear gravity bombs, thereby providing a complementary substrategic capability to the UK's primary sea-based Trident deterrent. This procurement aligns with the 2025 Strategic Defence Review and a broader NATO First strategy, which identified increased nuclear risks and the necessary to diversify the country's deterrent posture. A key justification articulated by the government is the financial advantage of opting for the F-35As over additional F-35Bs, citing cost savings of up to 25% per aircraft. The F-35As is priced at approximately £87 million per unit, compared to around £110 million for the F-35B. Beyond cost savings, the F-35As offer a greater variety of payload configurations and can carry internal weapons such as the larger precision guided missiles that the F-35 cannot. This broader capability enhances conventional strike capabilities whilst maintaining stealth. The decision to acquire F-35As for this nuclear role, despite the UK's existing F-35B fleet, highlights a clear prioritisation over a Pacific strategic capability, air-delivered nuclear deterrence. While the initial unit acquisition cost savings are emphasised, the overall cost implications of introducing a new variant and its specific operational requirements warrant closer observation. Introducing the F-35A necessitates new training, maintenance, command and control procedures and nuclear Pacific security protocols. These elements could offset some of the initial savings and potentially strain the overall defence budget, impacting other programmes such as F-35B sustainment or future procurement. To understand the ramifications for the Royal Navy, it is essential to differentiate between F-35A and F-35B variants. The F-35A is the conventional takeoff and landing variant designed for operations from traditional long runways. It is the most common model globally and is optimised for range, agility and payload capability. The F-35A boasts a larger internal fuel capacity of around 8,300 kilograms and can carry up to 8,300 kilograms of weapons. It is also the lightest of the variants and is capable of pulling higher G-forces. In contrast, the F-35B is the short takeoff and vertical landing variant, a unique design tailored for operations from shorter runways, expeditionary airfields, or critically aircraft carriers equipped with ski jumps. Its stovel capability is facilitated by a powerful lift fan and a swiveling engine nozzle. 
This complex system adds significant weight and design complexity, leading to trade-offs in performance, a slightly shorter combat range, reduced internal fuel, and a lower weapon store capacity. The Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers are specifically designed with a ski jump configuration and notably lack catapults or arresting gear. This design exclusively relies on F-35B's Stovall capabilities for launch and recovery. Consequently, the F-35A, being a CTOL aircraft, and the F-35C operated by the US Navy cannot operate from these carriers. This fundamental incompatibility means that the 12 new F-35As do not directly augment the Royal Navy's carrier air wing strength in terms of deployable aircraft, underscoring a clear divergence in the UK's air power capabilities. The Royal Navy's two aircraft carriers, HMS Queen Elizabeth and HMS Prince of Wales, are the core of the UK's carrier strike groups. The UK currently operates 38 F-35Bs, with 33 based in the UK and 4 assigned to a test unit in the United States, with one aircraft lost in 2021. The final 10 aircraft of the initial batch of 48 F-35Bs are anticipated to be, to be delivered by the end of 2025. A typical Queen Elizabeth class carrier air wing is designed to accommodate around 40 aircraft, with an ambition to field up to 24 F-35 fighters, alongside various helicopters. Analysts suggest that a force of between 60 to 70 F-35s would be required to consistently maintain 24 jets available for baseline carrier strike missions across both ships, accounting for training and maintenance demands as well. Joint exercises with the US Marine Corps, which operates F-35Bs, have demonstrated interoperability, allowing F-35Bs to operate interchangeably from each other's ships, thereby significantly expanding mobility and powered projection capabilities. The stated ambition of 24 F-35s per carrier for baseline operations and the current procurement numbers immediately highlight a potential shortfall in achieving consistent, fully-sized carrier air wings. Sustaining 24 jets on even one carrier, let alone across two, presents an ongoing challenge with current fleet numbers. The most immediate and direct impact of the F-35A acquisition is that these 12 aircraft are being purchased instead of 12 F-35Bs as part of the next procurement package. This means that the next tranche of 27 aircraft will comprise of 12 F-35As and 15 F-35Bs, rather than the previously anticipated 27 F-35Bs. This decision directly slows the growth of the F-35B fleet, whilst the UK maintains a declared long-term target of 138 F-35s over the programme's lifetime, this specific procurement package diverts resources from the F-35B. This makes it more challenging to reach the analytically suggested target of around 60 to 70 F-35Bs needed for consistent carrier operations. With fewer F-35Bs entering service in the near term, the ability to consistently field the desired 24 jet carrier air wing for both carriers could be further challenged, potentially leading to smaller deployed air wings or increased reliance on allied F-35B contributions. This immediate reduction in F-35B procurement directly impacts the Royal Navy's capacity to achieve its desired carrier air wing size, potentially prolonging the period of reliance on Allied support. Paradoxically, the F-35A purchase may offer an indirect benefit to the F-35B programme. The 12 F-35As are primarily intended for a training role within the 207 Squadron, the Operational Conversion Unit. Given that the F-35A has a longer range and requires fewer maintenance hours than the F-35B, it can remain airborne for longer training sorties 
and offers increased aircraft availability. This could enhance pilot training efficiency and reduce the time required for pilots to qualify for frontline squadrons, potentially freeing up F-35Bs that would otherwise be dedicated to OCU training. This family of strike aircraft approach is intended to significantly reduce life cycle costs and improve the overall F-35 force generation for carrier strike operations. This represents a strategic attempt to mitigate the numerical impact on the F-35B fleet by optimizing training efficiency, although its overall effectiveness will depend on seamless integration and resource allocation between the variants. The UK government's pledged to raise core defence spending to 3.5% of GDP by 2035 represents a substantial increase from the current 2.4% of GDP. This long-term increase in defence spending could, in theory, provide the financial capacity to eventually meet the ambitious target of 138 F-35s, including a sufficient number of F-35Bs to fully populate both carrier air wings. However, the 3.5% target is set for 2035 and current plans indicate that core defence spending is projected to remain relatively flat at around 2.6% of GDP between 2027 and 2030. This suggests that a significant ramp up in funding specifically for additional F-35Bs may not materialise immediately. Any substantial increase in F-35B procurement would likely require further spending reviews to revise these plans upwards. Consequently, the immediate impact of the increased defence spending on the F-35B fleet's growth beyond current numbers may be limited, potentially constraining the Royal Navy's F-35B fleet growth in the medium term despite the headline defence increase. The F-35 programme is known for its high operating costs, estimated at around £24,000 per flight hour. Total investment in the F-35B programme has already exceeded £9 billion. The introduction of the F-35As, with their own acquisition, maintenance and nuclear integration costs, place considerable strain on the overall defence budget. Furthermore, the UK has undertaken other major defence investments including a £15 billion investment into the Sovereign Nuclear Warhead Programme and ambitions to deliver up to 12 conventionally armed nuclear-powered submarines. Even with a rising overall defence budget, these multiple large-scale and long-term commitments will create intense competition for funds. This could necessitate difficult trade-offs, potentially impacting the pace of F-35B procurement the timing of upgrades, or even the availability of crucial escort ships and support vessels that are essential for effective carrier strike route operations, which are already facing challenges due to personnel shortages and vessel age. The Strategic Defence Review outlines a shift towards hybrid carrier air wings. This evolving model involves F-35Bs being complemented by autonomous collaborative platforms such as drones and deck-launched long-range precision missiles. This approach could diversify the carrier strike group capabilities beyond its F-35 complement, providing a high-low mix of assets. Plans include the development of medium-sized fixed-wing unmanned aerial vehicles as part of Project Vixen, capable of undertaking strike, air-to-air -air refueling, electronic warfare, and airborne early warning missions by 2030. This emphasis on hybrid carrier air wings suggests a recognition that relying solely on F-35Bs might not be sufficient or cost effective for future carrier power projection, thus representing a strategic adaptation to potential F-35B quantity limitations. The government's long-term vision still includes procuring 138 F-35s over the programme's lifetime, which leaves scope for further F-35B orders. However, the long-term 138 F-35s target now implies a mixed fleet 
of F35As and F35Bs, fundamentally altering the original version of a predominantly F35B carrier-centric force. The decision to acquire F35A fighters alongside a significant boost in defence spending marks a pivotal moment for UK national security. Whilst these F-35As are crucial for re-establishing an air-delivered nuclear deterrent for NATO, they are fundamentally different from the F-35Bs that operate from our Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers. However, the broader increase in defence spending does offer future opportunities. It could eventually allow for more F-35Bs and support the development of hybrid carrier air wings, integrating advanced drones alongside our F-35Bs. Ultimately, the UK is navigating a complex path, balancing its renewed nuclear deterrence with the ambition to maintain world-class carrier strike power. The success of the Royal Navy's air power will depend on how effectively these strategic priorities are managed in the years to come. For a more in-depth analysis on how the recent SDR impacts the Royal Navy, please click on this video in the top right corner. In the meantime, thanks for watching this update.